Hello, and welcome to another episode of Lost in Criterion. I'm John Patrick Owatari Dorgan, and I with am, me is... Oh, I'm sorry, you said and and paused, and I, I jumped on you. I am the Adam Glass. Uh, thanks for listening. Welcome, welcome the back. Adam Glass. Welcome, John Patrick Owatari Dorgan. I can't say your last name. I know, I know, it's really embarrassing. Oh, Actually, you did a really good job oh, that time. sorry. Well, I think I said Owatari. I, I don't know. I think I switched. It's okay. Or put an extra one in there. Anyway. We, me and Donovan have firmly established that you and Japanese names do not get along. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, this week we were talking about Henri Georges Clouseau's uh, masterwork, uh, Diabolique. Um, uh, this is a movie he made in what was it? Uh, I don't remember. I'm 19, sorry, Adam. 1958. I forgot to write down what uh, what year I <laughs> what year this movie I was stopped made. taking notes. It's actually it's 55. I'm sorry. Ago. It's 1955. Um, uh, it was the tenth highest grossing film in France of 1955. Uh, and for some reason, when I wrote that fact down, I wrote 1855, and I assume <laughs> that if this movie had come out in 1855, it would not be the 10th highest grossing film, uh, but, but probably would have scared everyone away from movies. <laughs> right. It um, probably would have been burned. Yes. Uh, there is an apocryphal story that Clouseau bought the rights for this uh, out from under Hitchcock by a matter of hours. Uh, lending credence to that is the fact that this is from a novel by the same authors that uh, wrote the book Vertigo was based on. Uh, but there's I didn't no... realize this was based on a book. Yes, it is based it on a book. That's what I know. Yeah, there you go. Uh, maybe you should do a little research, huh? No, I'm pretty much going to stick with what I've been doing so far. Yeah, that's fine. Watch the movies. It's 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 just as good. I, I feel like one of us should be relatively uninformed. <laughs> uh, Pat, uh, relatively, we're talking about movies. We're both uninformed. Fine. Right, exactly. Um, what do we know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> all right. So, uh, like I said, uh, based on the novel that Hitchcock wanted to make, uh, very clearly, also, uh, at, while we're on the Hitchcock note, uh, very clearly an influence on Psycho, um, both in you tone know, and and some uh, some action. I read that, and then I realized I've never seen Psycho. Uh, I think we'll probably be watching Psycho at some point. Well, that's good. So. Let's just go ahead and spoil the movie right now. All right, all right. First He's off. N- actually, let's say this. You know, if you have not watched the movie yet, absolutely. turn we, this podcast Yeah, we off. cannot. we cannot talk about this movie without spoiling it. I know many people have attempted to do so, but uh, we're, not going to, we're not going to do that. Uh, I will point out that one of my favorite things about this movie is the final title card yes, that, yeah, that encourages oh, viewers... Yeah. And this has been on since since the original release uh, in theaters. Don't uh, be a devil. Don't, <laughs> don't tell be a your devil. friends what happens. Don't tell anyone what happens, exactly. Um, which is But great. we have to. Hello, that's the premise of the podcast. So. But yes, the premise of the podcast is to talk about the movies. And, and as such, uh, spoiler alert. No, here's, how, here's what we'll do. Okay. We want you to turn off the podcast in three, two, two one, one, pause. Okay, welcome back. Okay, welcome back. Uh, hopefully <laughs> You've watched, watched the, movie. the movie now. Um, it is now an hour and a half on. later. Uh, weren't you surprised? I was. I was somewhat surprised. I was um, very surprised, even uh, though I knew it was coming, because like I could just yeah. you, could, you can tell, right? You can tell that he's not dead. Otherwise, it's I mean, not nearly as an exciting a movie, right? This is you figure out the plot at a. I guess each person's different, but you know, at about twenty minutes before the end of the movie, I guess. Yeah, it becomes apparent that okay. Yeah. Something's something's strange. He this is not dead. This isn't that like, child is not a liar. That poor poor child. Yeah, that poor poor child. <laughs> Always around. being punished. Always being punished. Actually, I really like. Also, uh, speaking of the ending, I really like that child's uh, that child's second encounter with authority uh, <laughs> yeah. on the screen, uh, okay. where he claims I, that the I, woman we just saw have a heart attack gave him his his. Uh, the slingshot back. The but implication. Was, the implication well, think, that, What's it? Well, you but he... Okay, so there's a couple things here, okay? We don't uh-huh. know that she's dead. Yeah. It was an awfully overly dramatic death, okay? Yes. It was like bad, like, high school 
stage performance death, okay? It was it was a little over the top, but it was... Well, but that could mean that she's actually acting. Yeah. Okay? Because he, the inspector, comes in, the commissioner, the former commissioner, mm-hmm. comes in and says, like, that'll be 15 to 20 years. Yeah. I think murdering somebody gets you more time than that. Oh, not, a, not so, in France in the 50s. Oh, okay. Well, maybe not. Because she was a woman. And a foreigner. I'm, um yeah. But no, I'm just saying that if if he, they're just being indicted for fraud and a couple other things like that, yeah. 15, 20 years is right in line. Yeah. So maybe she's not dead. Maybe not. Maybe not. Um, I don't know. 20 is a life sentence, so... What? 20 for, is a life sentence? Isn't, isn't a life sentence she in the US 20 years? Why did I think, I don't why know. Do I think that? I don't think I don't that's know. true. It might well, not be. But like... Life sentence, that would mean that, like, whatever her name is, Nancy, would be, like, 60. She'd yeah. totally still be alive. Yeah, but less likely to fake someone's death in order to murder someone. I don't think so. Nancy seems like a pretty stone-cold... <laughs> she is a science teacher. Yeah, right? And it's always the science teachers. <laughs> yes. And headmasters. Cooking cooking math and murdering women. What were they making in that class? <laughs> I spent a lot of my free, like, <laughs> mental processes of the movie yeah. trying to figure out what the hell she was teaching. I was, I was actually just making a reference to Breaking Bad, but, but yeah, you, you raise a good point. <laughs> what, what was that science class doing? I think, yeah, it, I think they were it, making some weird stuff in there. I think it was your normal, your normal uh, science class in fiction that it just has to be something that looks sciencey. So, so yeah, uh, do something sciencey. So uh, boiling, boiling beakers and and <laughs> right. Colors. Oh, um, oh man! Oh, I gotta tell you, the other thing that distracted me—I just get all the things that really distracted me. Man, that was the worst English class I've ever heard in my entire life. <laughs> she is a terrible English teacher. Yeah. yeah. Give, give, given. Well, it's 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 rote English. It's it's very it, much. Well, yeah, and we yeah. No, it is unfortunately it, it was distracting. It is unfortunately how languages were taught for a very long time. Yeah, it's the, it's the classical style, and it's yes. Cool. yes. Um, Sorry, interesting, I, that just interesting fact. Me. While we're while we're on, uh, before we get too far from uh, from Christina's character dying, or, or uh, maybe just having a heart attack. Maybe uh, yeah. Uh, well, that's um, the other thing. She could have just had a heart attack and lived. Yeah. Vera Clouseau, who is the actress there, and is actually uh, the director's wife. Uh, herself died of a heart attack in 1960. Oh, um, she's a uh, very pretty lady. She is a very pretty lady. She's 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 very pretty here. She's very pretty in our next movie, Wages of Future. Yeah, too. and I was um, surprised to see her. Yes, in, in yes. the next one. So she looks she looks uh, she looks rather different in both movies too. Actually, yeah, but I think yeah, I, I think yeah. I think mostly just by the fact that in this movie she's playing a sickly sickly uh, 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 school owner, uh, and in the next movie she's she's playing. Uh, what is ostensibly supposed to be a, a very young woman. Um, yeah. Well, possibly she's... even in her late teens. Um. I would like to point out also yeah. that that headmaster has some awful tastes. <laughs> because the woman he is mur- he is an accomplice with is yeah. far less attractive than the woman he's murdering. <laughs> But she is French. She's not one of those dirty oh, okay. foreigners, I guess. Uh, it's the dirty foreigner effect again. <laughs> one, one thing I really like in this movie um, uh, is that uh, uh, Christina always pronounces his name Miguel, the, the, mm-hmm. the Spanish pronunciation of Michael, uh, mm-hmm. whereas his name is Michel, uh, the French pronunciation of Michael. Yeah, but Michelle and sounds awfully girly. I understand it, why it, she's doing it that. It does. It's French. Yeah, she wants to... She wants, to <laughs> she wants, her, she wants her, her husband to her husband sound manly. <laughs> yeah. I would. No, too. I just it's 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 a little subtle thing that that distracted me at first actually, but but I came. You know, I didn't notice it because more. I don't speak I don't speak I don't speak French or yeah. Spanish or. So you, you just you just assume they were all speaking French and you couldn't understand. No, I understood the thing. Like we were we were switch, yeah. especially yeah. in like this the next movie we'll watch. Um, yeah. But um, in general, I have a tendency in films that if I don't understand. The language being spoken yeah. to completely ignore it. Ah, <laughs> uh, this well, is why like, you... reading for me is such an reading in general as an activity for me is such yeah. an engrossing behavior anyway that yeah. I could just read the dialogue, yeah, the the transla- I mean, the subtitles for the movie so. and 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 enjoy it almost as well as if there's moving pictures or not. So, yeah. 
Um, <laughs> just yeah. a thing. But but this guy this guy you 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 say he has he has bad taste, but uh, he's just generally just... a bad person. He's, oh God, he's, he's the worst. Uh, he he beats his wife. He beats his mistress. Uh, there's there's an implication oh, no, that he, at confused. one point does he beat his mistress or not uh, he, for real? He at least he at or least is that a verbally, trick? He at least verbally abuses everyone. He, well, that's he, true. He yeah. is. A, he is. I'm. Pardon my French. Ass hat. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. think that's French. No, no. Um, enculé. That is a good French French insult. Okay. Um, so I pardon my French. So. He's an enculé. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, I guess I guess you could argue that it's all. It might be a put on. Um, I don't think we we necessarily see. Yeah, him I just don't know. And on that... screen, actually abusing her, and even if we did, it could be the two of them acting, trying to right trying lull to... her into the because they yeah. need her. Um, in order for this to work, they need her. We we need yeah. Christine to trust Nancy. Yes, and the only way that would work is if they share a common cause. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. that that is most readily. Created by her being abused as well. Now the issue yeah. with that is, is that we obviously know that he is abusive to his actual wife, yes. and it's pretty likely that if he's abusive to his actual wife, he's abusive to his mistress as well. So yeah, or or at least will be at some point. Yeah, it's so it will get uh, that way. He's 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 also he's incredibly stingy to to ludicrous extent because it's not <laughs> his money anyway. I um, love yeah the. Um, no, uh, it's connected. The, uh, the the other yeah. two teachers are just the other so two great. teachers complaining about the cheap wine and the and yeah. the bad fish and everything. Uh, no, well, it's, everybody's it's complaining about this fish. Even like the porter yeah. is complaining about the fish. The guy yes. who brings out the he's like, yes. oh, same smelly crap again. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. Um, who was it? Uh, there is a one of the essays on the Criterion website is by a guy named Terence Rafferty, uh, and he he has this sentence which is so. So beautiful. Uh, Michel de la Salle is, in short, begging to be killed for the general good. He's pretty much the platonic ideal of a deserving murder victim. He is. That's so true. That yeah. you Right from the very beginning, you're like, oh, God, I can't wait till this guy dies. <laughs> yes. yes. Even, even if you walked into this not knowing it was a murder mystery. <laughs> you start wanted. thinking immediately, man, I hope this guy dies. <laughs> yes. This might be yeah. a romantic comedy. I still hope this guy oh, dies. I still hope that guy dies. Uh, oh, he's, yeah, he's the worst. Which I guess, in a manner of speaking, makes him a fantastic actor. Yeah, yeah. To make a absolutely. person that's that hateable yeah. is pretty stellar performance. Yeah. And then well, also his rising from the dead scene is just, wow. Oh, yes. Um, it's just yeah. the most creepy thing you'll ever see in your entire life. And it's not scary. It's not a scary movie, but that yeah. is creepy. Yeah, this is that image will stay with me. I have I have described uh, some of my favorite horror movies. Well, my absolute favorite horror movie is The Thing, and I describe it as less a horror movie and more a terror movie. Uh, in as much as as Psycho and this are are horror movies, uh, they are they are certainly meant to be scary movies, but they're not they're not what we think of when we think of a horror movie. They're not like slasher movies. They're not you know they're not. They're not over to the top violent movies, but they they have a slow burning terror. Right, and you, um, uh, this movie does a fantastic job of that. Yeah, you're as you watch Christina. Yeah, her stress becomes your stress. Yeah, and certainly, certainly having her be the point of view character is is you know a necessity to this movie. But yeah, but it's she. I mean, this is this is we talked. About her, her death seemingly maybe being over the top uh, in, in, in what she's doing. But um, her terror, the terror she exhibits in, in the third act, uh, right before we discover, you know, some, <laughs> we cement the fact that he's still alive with that slow rise. Yeah. The, uh, <laughs> oh, gosh, the creepiest uh, yeah. thing I've ever seen. Yes. And, you know, even, even, you know, by that point, even if you're expecting that he's still alive. And I was. I was yeah, that thoroughly is still, aware of the fact that he was alive. It's so creepy. Yeah. And it's so creepy and it is, the way it is he just terrifying. silently rises. It's, it's absolutely terrifying. And, like, and, and that, she, the buildup as she gets into that room, I found myself yeah. going, and I'm watching it, like, 3 o'clock yeah. in the afternoon. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, this is terrifying. Like, yeah. like I could feel my own heart racing. 
Yeah, because she runs down the hallway screaming after the, the experience with the typewriter uh, and his name showing up on the typewriter. Uh, and then runs down the hall and just to splash water in her face to you know wake her up because she thinks she might be dreaming or whatever, having a nightmare, obviously. And then just this slow turn and his body's in the bathtub there. Oh, I know. His body that has been missing for weeks uh, or at least days. Yeah, uh, for about five days or something. Someone suddenly shows up at a place it really shouldn't be. Um, oh, yeah, and, then, and, it, and even if you were expecting him to be alive, <laughs> the presence there is just so yeah. unexpected. Because yeah. even if you were expecting him to be alive, you don't know when he's going to be revealed. Yeah. There's and no the way to know. The reveal is is the same as the last time we saw him. His right. body sunk underwater, uh, seemingly drowned. Um, yeah, it's just... it's. Oh, yeah, and then I was actually expecting him to be revealed in the typewriter room. That's what I was yeah. expecting. And then it didn't yeah. happen, and I was like, and that just upped the, the ante on the stress level for me. Yes, yes. It was, uh, it was great. But, it, but again, what I was getting at, her portrayal of pure terror is some of the best acting I've ever oh, seen yeah. on that end of things. That is, uh, that is, that is legit fear. <laughs> it, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. she does a great, a great job, and... There's not really much... I mean, the acting in this film is good. It's solid, as far yeah. as I can see. Like, I yeah. mean, there's... It's, even the children do a pretty good job, which is hard to come yeah. by. Like, which children is, actors who do a good job are... Yeah. It's hard maybe, to do. I mean... Maybe French children are just better at acting. I'm than, starting to think. Maybe ch- French children are skilled at the art of deception or something. Well, they are French. Let's be racist. Um... Mm. Are they a race? That's the question. <laughs> All right. Well, they are French. Let's well, be let's be public. let's be culturally uh, in, uh, insensitive. Yeah, no. they are certainly a culture. Yes. Um. Yes. But no. Well, I'm just saying because, like, between this and 400 blows, yeah, I've been yeah, totally exactly. impressed by the f- French children I've seen acting. Which I'm. Yeah. Come on. We've all seen Haley Joe Osmond. Okay. <laughs> We all know how bad children, act, uh, child actors, could be. Uh, Jake, whatever the kid from uh, episode one. Oh, I, yeah, I don't know. The, I can't uh, remember his name. Yeah. yeah, children, children actors as of late. Even even uh, even the ones that are super good uh, aren't super good. Yeah, but these, these I mean these kids do a good job. They they yeah. they're believable. Their reactions are fairly. In line with what you would expect. Yeah. I love I love yeah. the kid who gets in trouble those two times. He's like one of my favorite characters in the movie. Yeah. Oh, he's Because at the end, he's just so like, I'm going to go to the corner because... Yeah. Seriously. Yeah. He just... I he can't just take it anymore. Just, <laughs> yeah. He's hiding at this point. <laughs> well, you know, that's that's one of the other ways that the, the headmaster is, is the worst man. Oh, the worst. I know. Uh, his, his disproportionate... Uh, He's punishments. so abusive to the children yeah. as well. Yeah. And, you know... Yeah, I mean... Kicking them kicking them out of dinner before anyone's eaten. Um, for one person. Uh, but yeah, it's it's really... It's terrible. Yeah, it really he is. deserves to die. Yeah. yeah he's the platonic, all of his the petty money... Yeah. Which is really weird, because when you add up all the things he does, they're all just petty... Monday. Yeah. I mean, like beating his wife. Well, he doesn't. We don't ever see his him hit his wife. He's verbally abusive. Yeah, uh, for well, sure. I mean, it's there's a lot of implied violence. Yeah, and, exactly. And there's that, at least one scene that ends. That's with true. A a very clear implied rape. Um, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Um, um, so I mean, we do know that he is abusive, and yeah. But, no, we we actually we do see him slap her at least. Do once. we? Oh, I guess that's true. Uh, yeah, no, we do. Right, right? before yeah. they kill him. Right before they kill yeah. him, she 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 offers he, him the the whiskey, and and he drinks it. Uh, but then she tries to stop him from drinking, and he spills it on his shirt, and he slaps her. Yeah, yeah uh, when that's she true. brings him a towel to help him clean it up, and then calls her bleak, and you know he calls her a cute little ruin at some point, and, which is a weird insult. But yeah, but. <laughs> it is a weird insult. It's it it, it 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 occurs more than once, and it's weird. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely going in the pantheon of like really weird things to call somebody. Yes, yes. If you ever have a sick wife who you hate and wish dead, you call can, her you can a call ruin. Her a cute little ruin. Um. 
and then have her oh. look at you like you're a madman. Yes. Because, like, oh. what? <laughs> because you are. <laughs> yeah, right, clearly, you're a madman. Um, so, yeah. yeah I, we're, I find I'm in a little bit of a loss with this movie because it's the same loss that we get when the movies are really, really good. Yeah. I don't have a lot. Yeah. It's just really good. If you haven't yeah. watched the, it, watch it. The plotting of this movie is great. Um, if you haven't watched it and you've made it this far into the podcast, I hate you. Yeah, you're a terrible um, person because you you're ruined the person. movie for yourself. Yeah. Um, um, well, but yeah, the plotting of this movie, you know, it's a murder pretty mystery movie short like this. movie too. Yeah, it moves really. No, it feels movie. a lot shorter than it is. How, how, I mean, how this long is was a, it? This is, I'm pretty sure this is over two hours. Really? Oh, it felt yeah. so. Like the pacing is, yeah. It is. Oh, it is nearly two hours. It is one hour and seventeen minutes. Wait, that's not nearly um, two hours. It's one hundred and seventeen. I'm sorry, one hundred and seventeen. Minutes. <laughs> it's an it's hour and seventeen minutes. minutes. Like it's only one hundred and seventeen like, minutes. Yeah, yeah no, it's only it forty-three it's, minutes away from an hour, yeah, from two hours. No, no, it's one hundred and seventeen minutes. Okay, so it's it's, it's you know a, it's very yeah, nearly it's, two hours. It did not feel like two uh, hours to me at all. It doesn't feel like two hours. It's very well paced. It's very well the plotting of this movie. You know, because because murder mysteries like this, uh, you know, in order in order to get away with murder to a certain extent, you have to. Uh, a movie has to portray the perfect crime, and this is this is actually one of the more perfect crimes that I've ever I've ever well, seen. Well, especially if you take in consideration the police capabilities of the era. Yeah, I mean, lacking modern forensic techniques, like it yeah. would. Yeah, it's they're not going to. It's very. They're good. not going to pump his lungs and realize that the water is yeah is, is not is from a bathtub and not from the the river or from the pool. And, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, the the premise being that they they basically trick him into following them in the middle of the night to their little vacation spot. They drown him in the bathtub, then take his body back and throw it in the pool so that not only did he disappear in the middle of the night and no one knows where he might have gone, but then he's found uh, in the swimming pool as if he took a walk and just right. Fell it's in, like he never drunk. left. Yeah, it's like he never left. Um, and yeah, that's great. And then his body never shows up. And then that's the strike so, that he does. And it it's is the suit so that weird. He was wearing. It's, that is... it's just so weird. At that point, the movie kind of maybe is uh, feels like it might be suggesting just someone knows and is messing with Yeah, him. and that's what I believed for um, a long time. For throughout the majority yeah. of the movie, you're like, who is the, yeah. the extra person who yeah. is sort of participating in this murder yeah. that they don't and know about? We, we go on and we get to a point where we think maybe it's supposed to be he's haunting them or something. Yeah, yeah, but and th- a that was a weird bit, implication you know? because as far as I was concerned, like this movie had no supernatural elements. Yeah, this movie has no supernatural And so I was like, okay, so it's not a haunting. And that's when I was like, okay, yeah. he's alive. Yeah. Or there's somebody who is pretending to be him. Yeah. I was almost ready to believe perhaps he had a twin. For a few minutes there, I was like, well, because that seems like something yeah. you would see in a movie like this. It's like, oh, you killed my twin brother. We've been living, you know, maybe I've just seen too many Criterion films at this point. Uh, like, we've been sharing a life. You know, yeah. he's the abusive one and I'm the one <laughs> you fell in love with or whatever. I don't, I don't think, uh, I don't think The Prestige is a Criterion film, but. <laughs> oh, well, okay. But I didn't, well, wait, I didn't see. mean that he was duplicated in a magical, uh. <laughs> Tesla cloning machine, okay? No, no. Oh, no, the, the other twin all, was that, the, yeah. The other, twi- yeah. the other characters are twins. Yeah, but um, I mean, you know what I mean. No, but we've already but yeah, seen one yeah. movie with a twin. They were leaving, leading a double life, yeah. and yeah. they lose yeah. their minds, and eh. Yes. You know what I mean. Yeah. But that, that, no, that, 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 mean. that theory did not last for very long, but I was bouncing no. some theories around in my head before I was like, okay, he's just alive. Well, I think, I think him in the background of the picture is supposed to suggest maybe a ghost. Yeah. Um, but the fact that he's clearly behind the window, even, you know, they, they talk about him clearly being behind well, the window. Well, and that's where I jumped to the twin thing, is alive. because I was like, okay, he's yeah. not a ghost because... Yeah. And then I was He's like, not a ghost because he can't be. Right, because this is not a supernatural film. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he has nothing nothing else supernatural. If it if it were to be setting him up to be a ghost, uh, there would have been a floating candlestick at some point or something. Well, um, or we would have just... The movie would have been yeah. different. Like... Yeah. In fact, it would have made it a terrible movie if it were a ghost because it would have been one of those oh, movies yeah, that absolutely. just becomes supernatural for no reason out of nowhere. Yes, yes, yes. Which does happen. You know, all of all of her haunting and and her sickness is guilt, um, religious guilt for the most part. Um, 
It's the only reason. The only reason she feels guilty is because she's Catholic. Um, which is a which, which is a weird commentary that. in the. Yeah, yeah, that's France for you. Um, yeah, the movie is vaguely anti-religious, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah, very, very, very vaguely, I guess. Uh, you know, she's she. There was a, there was some line about her her feeling guilty about or needing to go to confession for something, but then the uh, the mistress calls her on not doing it for you know murder. Um, yeah, well, not feeling guilty about murder, and that's where again, she starts to. We, we're yeah. also doing heat. He totally deserved it. Yeah, yeah. It's really he's hard definitely. to feel like that part. Like, you can't really... I couldn't get yeah. along with her guilt because it was like, no. Yeah. This guy is the worst. This guy... You know, it's, a, it's an abusive relationship and it's hard... Yeah, it, Who it's would hard convict to her? Someone. Yeah, no one... No, Certainly not today would, would this woman be convicted of murder. Um, though the whole conspiracy thing might uh, might get that so meticulously planned well, a murder. Well, and that if she had just shot him outright, yeah, it would actually she would never be better for her. Today. Yeah, yeah, or just pushed him out of the um, window or something. Yeah, yeah. I love I love that that uh, the police inspector is just like I don't know. He really feels like Columbo to oh, me. Oh, I know, like right? Proto Columbo. I was like, I wonder. <laughs> If yeah. they saw this movie and thought <clears throat> we need to make that a yeah. thing, I mean, he even he even almost does and another thing a couple of times. Yeah, right. And, he, and turns around and comes back and asks one more question. He it. I really wonder if like we this is an influence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, he definitely. And the way the way he comes out at the end and says fifteen to twenty years, and it's just oh, like yeah. there. It is. It is. It definitely feels like he's Columbo in a lot. Well, and just his attitude and the way he talks yeah. to people. Yeah. That weird kind yeah. of like, like, like iron fist in a velvet glove kind of thing, where he's like yes. talking yes. gentle, but like these really prying questions. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. It's very Columbo. And he's, you know, he's the re- the retired police commissioner, which is the uh, really the only difference is that he's a private investigator now instead of still working as a police detective. Yeah. Um, which, you know, makes more sense because Columbo needs to be a weekly show. So they can't just have him every week being a private investigator solving another murder. Uh, I know. I mean, murder she wrote. You know, it's it's been done, but it's also... Uh, like, everywhere that poor woman yeah, goes, people wrote. die. Yeah, but she's clearly committing the murders, Pat. Yeah, okay, well, we, we should talk about that in another episode. I hope there's a murder <laughs> yes. she wrote, like, marathon <laughs> DVD box set moved. that we can talk about the Criterion Collection. <laughs> Because yeah, yeah maybe, she is. Maybe we'll do it. I mean, have you ever looked into her eyes? <laughs> yes, her cold, cold <laughs> Angela Lansbury yeah, eyes. They're, they're like just two like flints. Maybe, maybe we'll get a movie with Angela Lansbury in it that we can we can focus on. Yeah, that. but she'll probably be young, and I don't know what yeah. young Angela Lansbury looks like. <laughs> I think we might have seen young Angela Lansbury already. That's possible. I, I feel like she was in something. I'm really going to be upset if she's very shortly though. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so I'm I'm so sorry if she Yeah, she, it's gonna it's attracted. gonna mess with my head for days. Yeah. But yeah, but yeah, you know, like on on the Columbo <laughs> note, you know, she she breaks Yeah. She completely breaks down when when for, first off, it's very weird that he's watching her sleep. Yes, it is. Um, she has a right to be concerned. <laughs> She has a right to wake up and and be very angry. Because yeah, that is but weird. Then, but, it's like, I was just watching yeah. you. And it's like, yeah. that's not an excuse yeah. that works. You know that, right? That, like, is, that, is, that is not a reason for you to be like, here. I'm just I mean, watching he had, you. He had a legit reason for being there. He did. You know, he came right. in to, to, to give her something and then found her to be asleep. But then he sat down and watched her. And that's... Right. No, don't, he, don't do that. Suddenly um, knock on the door. But yeah, she wakes up and she, she completely she completely breaks down. You know, tells him everything, gives a full confession, and he just plays it off as, like, stress. Oh, and that's the interesting thing, is, like, at that point, he knows, right? That's why he plays it off, right? Well, now, you gotta you gotta remember... Because um, he's obviously he acting dumber than he is. Yeah. Yeah, which is, you know, another Columbo. Right, right, yeah. Um, but maybe maybe we're projecting Columbo onto him, I think. No, point, I don't maybe. know, because... <laughs> But his reaction but is he tells not natural her, for somebody who used yeah. to be a police commissioner. It's it's true. He tells her. He tells her. You know, go back to sleep. Tomorrow morning, you'll wake up acquitted. You know, calm down. 
and you won't have these thoughts in the morning. But then he goes. And then he, he takes the lighter from her, and he goes, and he talks to the boys about where they found the lighter. You know, they found it in the pool. Um, but obviously the body wasn't in the pool. Uh, he asked them about the trunk, and they show him where the trunk <laughs> I like those usually is, too. and now it's I not think, there. I think we fucked up. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then he's so interested in the trunk, and the boys are worried that they just got somebody in deep trouble. Yeah. Um, you know, and they, the the vinyl tablecloth is still inside the trunk and still wet. Um, yeah. So, I so, mean, he's obviously you know, piecing it together, though. And he's, and he's very much piecing it together, but I, I don't know if he's piecing it together prior or if he's confirming her story and that's what pieces it together. Well, and that's true, but, like, it's weird that he would blow off a confession like that. Yeah, that so is weird, completely. but at the same Unless time, she's also very clearly... Something's fishy. She's also very clearly emotional, and she's a woman in France in the 50s, so, that's true. you know, she's weak. hysteria or whatever, you know? She's lost her husband. Literally. <laughs> he's just gone. <laughs> yeah, he's just disappeared. Well, but, you know, like, if you're a police inspector, you're going to look at that and go, this is yeah, ex- yeah. this yeah. whole yeah. thing is stupidly suspicious. Yeah. Well, maybe he just likes her and he doesn't want to believe yeah, it. Yeah, I mean, it's also possible. She's a, she's, she's beautiful. She's beautiful and she seems like a very nice woman, so, in the story. Yeah. And so, yes. um, yeah, I mean, it's possible he just doesn't want to believe it. But then, like, to have made that turnaround that quick and like appear in the room where they to have pieced yeah. it together enough to like trap them doing it. I think he yeah. must already have a hunch when he talks to it, her. It's possible. It's possible. And one and yeah. is and, waiting and, for know. her to give him her story to yeah. fill out to flesh out the details. Yeah. It's possible. I mean, it's possible. yeah, I mean cuz like he seems suspicious almost as soon as he gets there. Yeah. So I, just, I I love that he's just hanging out in the lobby of the morgue. That's, right? That's like how he spends his days. Right, like, I'm just waiting for people who <laughs> don't find their loved one here. Yeah, just just looking for Which, by the way, I have to ask you a question. To pop up. The morgue thing, did they know that was going to... They didn't, right? That's not something they expected. No, no. Because, like, just... they didn't know about him. I was... A, you know what? I'm going to tell you something about the end. Uh, for me, yeah. personally. Um... I was so confused. Like, I knew that they were he was still alive, and I had expected that for a while. But I ended up having yeah. to watch the final, like, when he walks in a couple times mm-hmm. because I was like, is he in on it? Yeah, just because he's just there. Right. And, and like, yeah, I know whole, he says 15 whole... or 20 years, but it's, like, possible that, like, yeah. an accomplice would say something like that, too, as, like, like a joke. I'm like, yeah. And after I watched it the second time, I was like, oh, no. They're going yeah, to jail. No, no, they're they're being arrested. He's 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 not in on. Yeah, I think it's 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 it is a happy coincidence for our conspirators that the body was found, and ultimately an unhappy coincidence that uh, did he happen to be there? The inspector happens to be hanging. out. I don't think it's a happenstance. I think this is how he spends his days. Well, yeah, I'm sure it's how he spends his days, but it's it's bad for it's bad for De La Salle and De La Salle and and Nancy uh, Nancy. Yeah. Um, and yeah, no, and and it does introduce one of my favorite characters, which is him. I love the inspector. Yes, yes. The inspector is a great character. He's, a good, he's, he's great for the movie. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. No, no. You well, I was just gonna say he's really good at helps. He's very good at helping to build the suspense at the early part where he's introduced because yes. you're like, she's gonna get caught, and it's like, oh, yes. And then you get to the end, you're like, no, she's not gonna get caught. Well, because now she's dead, but. uh <laughs> You know, she didn't actually do anything. Yeah, yeah. That's just... What a movie. I love the uh, argument the two women have about who uh, who would actually be convicted and sent to prison between yeah. them. Well, obviously yeah. the mistress. This is 50s well, France. Yeah. <laughs> 50s France. No, I, th- I think mistresses were pretty... I think just the fact that... that uh, Christina has money, might get, might get her yeah. off, but well, and you know, and well, and she's beautiful and young, and yes, and Nancy's yeah. scary a mm. little bit, makes me a little bit uncomfortable when she's on screen. <laughs> she is a little, and she knows science, and smart women are even right, scarier. and she does things with beakers and wears sunglasses oh, at man. inappropriate times. I have been racist against French people and chemists. And I've been misogynistic and chemists. You're against chemists. Don't forget. 
Well, yeah, I'm definitely racist against chemists. Yeah, that that <sighs> chemistry doing race is the worst. <laughs> Oh. We need to, we need to stop using the term racist and switch to bigoted. No, no, I like using racist for, <laughs> for anything. anything, regardless of whether yeah. a race is involved or not. Yeah, exactly. It's better that way. Pat. Okay, it's better okay. that way. Um, the entire third act, I I love just you know her waking up and and seeing seeing the light working its way across the building. Uh, and knowing that no one else should be awake, uh, so she oh, goes to I know. investigate. It's, oh, but that's so terrifying. Oh yeah, like no, you know she's going to do it, and you have that moment, it. and it's so much better in this than it is in a regular horror movie. Of like, what are you doing? Don't yeah. go investigate. Yeah, it's no. This is so. This is this is masterfully done, um, in so many ways, uh, and it's it's. It's really weird. I never expected to find a movie that would out Hitchcock Hitchcock. Yeah, yeah. It that's, is more I mean, suspenseful was about than to... any Hitchcock film I ever watched. I am, I am. I think Hitchcock's take on this um, might have been interesting. But I don't think it would have been. I'm as not good. sure it would have been as good. I don't yeah. think it would have been this suspenseful. Yeah. So yeah, it's just oh, it's oh, it's so good. Yeah, Psycho is a great movie. Um, Psycho is a very suspenseful mm, movie. I've never Psycho seen it, like I said. owes a lot to this, but um, and you know, I, 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 if 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 I were to rate the two, you know, among every every suspense movie I've seen, Diabolique and Psycho would be the top two, hmm. but Diabolique would be the top one. <laughs> well, I like how you said that, Adam. Um, yeah. No, yeah, it, like, I mean, like, I've seen, you know, Vertigo, and we watched, um... Yeah. Uh, the, what, what was, the Lady Vanishes. Yeah, and, like, those are suspenseful, but not anywhere near like this. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah. Absolutely. Like, I, it is rare that I watch a movie that my, that I am this sucked into what's going on, and, like, this emotionally invested yeah. to, like, start feeling the stress. So... Great yeah. movie. Watch it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, if you haven't watched it, you, I don't know what the hell you're doing at this point. Um, we gave you a chance. <laughs> You've been, yeah, we've, we've talked about the whole thing yeah, now. Yeah, it's too um, late. Um, even if you watch it again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> go, watch, go watch it more. <laughs> um, Would you like we, us to give you another pause? <laughs> uh, I think we, uh, t- we've, we've talked a lot about the ending already but uh when he he very slowly gets out and then she comes in the mistress comes in i was a little i because because even knowing he was alive i still wasn't expecting it to be a conspiracy ah uh, yeah you that's know? true like yeah i knew that he was alive and i had my suspicions that she would be involved just because it's a suspense movie and i've watched way yeah. way too many crime dramas at this point i mean obviously obviously he couldn't do it all on his entirely own. fake his death on his own through the whole of everything. But, but still, uh, and he takes out those fake eyes. Oh, that's so uh, weird. And that was, Oh, that was so weird. <laughs> cause he, cause he's got like white, white, uh, pieces over his eyes just to make him look more dead. Uh, when he stands up, which makes the act of oh, him standing up so all the more weird. creepy. And he pulls pulls out his fake eyes, fixes his and hair. And like the way he steps calls. out of the bathtub, like they show his feet. Yeah. And it's just oh it's so good. Yeah. 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 And then she's just dying Yeah, there's a lot of her. There's a lot of like really tight shots like that. Like like when he's stepping out of the bathtub, it's just his feet. When they're pulling the body out of the car, it's just or when they put it in, I think, it's we see the shocks just going down. Yeah. Our our frame our frame is the tire, not the not the actual act of putting Oh, Everything but it's is. it's really good. I mean, like it just it tells the yeah. story without yeah. showing us everything, and it's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. and yeah, you know, I think within France, I think he might get uh, a sort of bad rap because it's also you know it's it's very it's very normal storytelling, and you know the very next generation, you know, ten years later, we're going to have. Truffaut and, and everybody, you know, the French New Wave, establishing an actual French identity for film, 400 Blows and On. Um, and this is still 
kind of a Hollywood movie. It, it is, but not, if you take not, into not account like the fact that, movie. like, he out-Hitchcock's Hitchcock. Yeah, and sort yeah, of I mean, it's, Hitchcock's it's, it's, it's Hitchcock. wonderful. Yeah. Like, I don't it's know how many Hollywood movies I've ever seen would be able to compete. Like it, it's better than that any holiday, a Hollywood suspense movie I've ever yeah. seen. But I'm still like like I, yeah, I know what you mean. Cinematographer convention. It uses very standard you know, filmmaking not, techniques. It doesn't do anything yeah, crazy, yeah. and and it does it. It uses them and and does them beyond. You know, it's but it's it's they're very good, but they're still you know standard stuff, and and you know in as much as. The French New Wave was was a response to and and a, a a going the other way from French directors of the past, and this is one of the French directors, one of the very recent French directors of the past. Um, I think there was a lot to learn from this guy. Yeah, like <laughs> dismissing Lizzo. what he did that is necessarily, a terrible idea. Yeah, because yeah, that maybe necessarily wasn't learned because he was one of the old men to ignore, but. But yeah, anyway, you know, that's 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 a film class that we're not in. So. Right, right. Well, and we get into this thing, it's like, ignored maybe by the French New Wave guys, but certainly not ignored entirely, because I know I've yeah. seen films that tried to do what he did. Yeah, um, this movie, this movie itself had, you know, direct remakes, um, and Wages of Fear, which we'll talk about next time, um, had like four remakes over the course of over Wages course of Fear. History. I can see better than this one. I think yeah. any remake of this yeah. would be kind of a waste of time. Yeah, uh, because you can't be. Well, it, it'd be like Gus Van Sant's remake of Psycho, right? Uh, which was a shot-for-shot shot remake starring Vince Vaughn. Yeah, but uh, I kind of, I always kind just, of love the idea of the shot-for-shot shot remakes. <laughs> That kind of amuses yeah, it's, me it's anyway. Got but, this, um, it's got in this certain avant-garde ridiculousness to it, uh, <laughs> but at the same time, uh, it was terrible. Yeah, no, I mean, I, there was some other terrible. movie I was reading about, like a shot-for-shot shot remake, yeah. and I always find that just a really weird concept. But, no, I mean, yeah. I'm just saying that, like, a remake of this would be, in my book, a waste of time, because yeah. the story itself is time-independent. Entirely. Like, yeah. the story Absolutely. could exist at any time period. It's like uh, setting something in the yeah. Old West and you or something. Even, yeah, you could, you could do it now, and you wouldn't even need very many No, no, you, know, you had uh, cell phones. Yeah, uh, but but where would cell no, they, phones they would just make have the story them. different? <laughs> yeah, they would just have it wouldn't them. actually the thing. change um, the story at all. Maybe they might attempt to call him at one point, or they might show that she has a missed call from his number. Yeah, that would, that would be, be weird. weird. But, and, but then that would almost ruin it, because that would be almost more of a dead giveaway that he's alive. It would be a little yeah. too much. And so, yeah, I but, mean, um, what I'm, yeah, so what I'm saying is this is a, remaking this is a waste of time. Wages of Fear is a little bit different, because yeah, you could tell the well, same, we'll get, yeah, we'll get to that. <laughs> we'll get to that. Wages of Fear has a more, a more, uh, has a story that can be repeated. Yeah, it's it's more of a standard story anything. anyway. And so, yeah, there's not there's not a lot of there's not a twist ending to Wages of Fear. All right, that's, I mean, there's not uh, there's there's not as much. Yeah, as a twist well, let's there's not surprises give away in the episode. ending of Wages of Fear. But, but yeah, for there's the people not, who haven't watched any it sort yet, of twist, because so, that's actually going to yeah. be next week. Yeah. But anyway, anyway, um, yeah, this is this is it's one of my this is favorite, a beautiful, movies. wonderful um, film, and this is this, this is, is going up there. It's a real tough race between this and Four Hundred Blows about what my favorite movie is, yeah, from the Criterion Collection. And I'm also a little upset that yeah. both of my favorite movies from the Criterion Collection have <laughs> been French films. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're all bigoted against the French. Yeah, it's See, I not said so bigoted, much that. It's just it would have been nice if I. Some American film had made it on there, but it's not. It's not going to happen. Because what did they include well, from American you know, filmmaking? Armageddon. Yeah, and we get to watch that in I'm a couple so of weeks. I'm so excited. So, you know, maybe maybe a fresh look at Armageddon after seeing all of these movies. Will make us it, vomit. Uh, we'll, we'll, have, we'll give you a new perspective, a fresh love Billy for Thornton. the works of Michael Bay and Billy Bob Thornton. I think I'm actually going to really and, enjoy uh, it because... His any character he plays makes me laugh, regardless of the setting of the film. 
<laughs> it's true. It's true. My favorite. My favorite for that is Billy Bob Thor, Fat Billy Bob Thor in, in Tombstone. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> I could accept that. Like playing cards with my brother's kids, <sighs> and then they kick him out. It's wonderful. He's only there. He's only there for like two yeah. minutes. But but yeah. Okay, anyway. <laughs> let's not let's let's wrap this one up. We don't need to talk about Tombstone for the next twenty five minutes. We can talk more about Billy Bob Thornton's history. That's when we basically talk about what Armageddon, Armageddon because episode's going to be. It will it will give us something to talk about that isn't <laughs> <Right>? Armageddon. <laughs> oh, okay, so yes. um, anyway, how do we end the podcast? I forget. <laughs> Mostly, we say oh. goodbye, but um, a, a general reminder uh, as as. As the movie itself said. Yeah, don't uh, tell your friends. Don't spoil this. Don't tell your friends what don't this movie Don't even tell your enemies. How this movie ends. Don't don't tell don't tell anyone any more about this movie than the first 20 minutes. Yeah, maybe don't even um, tell them that. Just tell, tell them watch it. Maybe not that much. Just make them watch it. Because this is this is one of my favorite yeah, movies now. Yeah, me too. I'm, and, uh, it's yeah, wonderful. It needs to be seen. Um, so, yeah. Um, thanks for listening. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you can tell people about our podcast. You can spoil our podcast. Yeah, you, you can tell them about how bad we are. I don't. How would we? Sp- I promise. I promise. At some point. We'll no, it. no, it's not going to happen. Um, but that's okay. Pat, don't be so. Don't be so self defeating. Oh, I'm sorry. It's going to be fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> well, don't be delusional. Oh. It will be <laughs> mediocre. It'll be something. It'll, It'll be, be a something. thing. We'll get into it. Yeah. Especially after you get it. Yeah, Thanks yeah, for listening. We'll see you next week. We're talking about uh, Clouseau's, Clouseau's uh, direct prior film to this, uh, the movie that put him sort of back on the map. Wages uh, of Fear. The Wages of Fear. The Wages it's of Fear. It's a great title. Which uh, sounds, a lot more, sounds a lot more like a horror movie than it is. It's weird um, because it, is it a has a very horror a wonderfully I did not know what movie. to expect. So. Yeah. It is a wonderfully suspenseful movie. Uh, and and uh, I just, at the beginning of the show... This week, I called uh, I called Diabolique Clouseau's masterwork. Uh, so I'll end this by calling The Wages of Fear Clouseau's masterwork. Yeah, who knows and, which uh, one is. We'll talk about it next week. Right, Thanks bye. for listening. Listening to Lost in Criterion, a production of With Two Brains. The show is hosted by Adam Glass and John Patrick Owatari Dorgan. Jonathan Hape did the music, and Adam Glass also edited it all together. Feel free to contact us by email via lostincriterion at with or join us on the web at